I want to do a video today as if I was talking to my own mother. There's a lot of new technologies coming out and the advice that I would give her if she were in the market for a heating and air system, I would give her three tips, three bits of advice, three things as far as technology goes that I would maybe look at and I wouldn't necessarily be so concerned about some of these other things like certain ratings that it seems like a lot of folks focus in on. And so Again, in this video, I'm going to focus in as if I were talking to her, and hopefully you get something out of that. I think there's some different thought processes going on here. I was just talking to someone the other day on my website, newhvacguide.com, and we were going through some of the ins and outs of this new technology and some different thoughts that they had. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't agree with them. They were a little old school, and their thoughts were, these new technologies are not good for me, and I'm going to dig in my heels and stick with what I know works well. And so when we see certain states, for example, that are phasing out low efficiency furnaces, right? They're saying, if you're not above a certain rating, you're not going to be able to be sold anymore, right? That's one of the things we're starting to see. And so this particular customer of mine, this particular individual was telling me, I'm going to go ahead and buy one of the low efficiency furnaces while I can, right? That was their thought. Before they go away, I know they work great and that's what I want. And so I think that's okay, right? I think that there are people that feel that way and they're going to go that route. But in this video, again, I want to give you advice as if you were my own mother. I want to say these are the three things that I would focus on, right? There are all these new technologies and there's all these ratings and there's so much noise. That's probably how you found this video. It's so confusing. There's just so much. And I'm going to give you three things, again, that I would tell my own mother. Focus on these three things. Don't focus on all that stuff. And so here's the three things. The first thing is I would focus on looking at heat pump technology. That's controversial. There's going to be guys that maybe even comment on this video and they say, oh no, they're horrible. Don't say that. I remember having one 30 years ago and it barely blew warm. And let me say, no one paid me to do this video, right? This is not a push for one political side or a push for one specific company. It's me saying that if you have not looked at heat pumps or the heat pump technology in the last, say, 10 years, maybe even 20, but definitely 10 years, they've come so far. They've come a very long way. And so we're seeing with like these new refrigerants coming out, for example, they have a better operating, better performance at lower ambient temperatures than before. They're being able to produce heat at very low temperatures outside. We're also seeing technologies where these heat pumps can just simply perform better at colder temperatures because of the technology itself. And I'm not going to get into all of that. I'm not going to get into compressor sizing and capacities and all the reasons why that is. But ultimately, I would just say if you haven't owned a heat pump in a while, maybe take a look. They are more efficient. We hear folks talking about, well, I wouldn't buy an electric car for this reason, right? They'll fill in different reasons why they wouldn't drive an electric car. And just again, to prove the point that I'm not pushing a political agenda here, I don't drive an electric car, at least not yet, right? I'm waiting for the flying ones to come out. <laughs> I will say I've got friends that live in much colder climates than I do that have leaned in with these heat pumps. They're seeing customers save a lot of money. They're not burning fossil fuels, especially the ones that get delivered to their house and they can be quite pricey, right? They can get quite expensive in the winter. So that would be my first one. That's the first technology I would maybe consider telling my own mother to look at, especially if she didn't have one before. The second one would be, I would look at these inverter systems, not so much the ratings, but a system that is an inverter system. And so what is an inverter? Well, ultimately, in the old days, we had single stage systems. It was like a light switch. It was either flipped on or off, right? There was no in between. That system would kick on and it'd be running at 100% or kick off and not be running. And then as time went on, we started coming up with stages. We started seeing two stage systems that might run at a lower capacity, a lower speed. And so if that light switch were to have, you know, maybe a, a halfway or maybe a 70% way of turning on that light and it not being quite so bright, and then you would still have that second stage. You could flip that light switch all the way on, right? And then finally today we have inverter systems and I would equate them to something like a dimmer switch on a light, right? There's a lot of in between and that system at times on a mild day might be just barely running. They dehumidify better in most cases. They are more efficient. They perform better. I mean, we could go all day long on the ins and outs. I've done other videos talking about inverters versus single stage, how some of them can find a temperature and run at a 
constant speed instead of this up and down. Oh, it's warm in here, kick on. Oh, it's gotten hot in here, turn off. And so the second technology, again, I would tell my own mother, check out inverters. And then finally, at least during the making of this video, now this may change in the future, but right now, if you were to buy a communicating system, that's the verbiage that I'll use, a communicating system, they are superior than a non-communicating system. Now, again, non-communicating systems in the future could come a long way, but ultimately communicating systems right now allow that system instead of the thermostat just closing a couple switches and sending voltage to the unit and saying, okay, turn this on or off. What communicating systems do is they actually talk to one another. They're, it's almost like the internet. They're sending these binary codes and they're constantly communicating using DC voltage. And because of that communication, not only can they report error codes, hey, something's not right here, put an error up on that thermostat, but they can also optimize the performance. They can tell each other, hey, it's kind of warm out today. We need to ramp up a little bit. Hey, it's kind of cold out today. You know, all these different ins and outs, they can talk to one another. The indoor unit can essentially tell the outdoor unit, hey, I need to turn on because I'm seeing a higher load here. I'm seeing a warmer temperature than normal. And so because of all this communication, unlike a non-communicating system, where it's just a couple switches closing here and there inside the thermostat, the performance overall of a communicating system is far superior. So ultimately, what am I saying here? Just to kind of summarize, we're talking about a heat pump system that is an inverter that is a communicating. And the very first thing, I'll probably get a comment on this video that folks talk about all the time is price. And some of these systems can be quite an investment. If I were selling the house right away, maybe I wouldn't look at one of those systems. But as time has gone on recently, in the last couple of years, we've seen some budget-friendly options. Again, I'm not saying you should completely ignore things like SEER ratings and AFUs and HSPF and EER and COP and all the other types of ratings that are out there. I'm not saying ignore decibel levels. I'm not saying ignore all that. I'm just saying in general, if you get a system that is a heat pump inverter communicating system, that you're going to be so much further along, even if you go with one of the more budget-friendly options than you would have been if you stayed with single-stage furnace technology, all those types of technologies that we've seen used for decades now and have run our utilities bills up. I've had customers that we've had this conversation, and I was never a pushy guy, right? I never pushed them in a direction. If they wanted to go the other route, fine. But I would explain to them some of the things I'm explaining to you right now and get them even into one of the more budget-friendly options to be a heat pump communicating inverter, right? And because of that, I've had customers, I remember one lady hugging me. When I went back to do her maintenance years later, she was telling me how much better her utility bills have gone. Within a year and a half, the extra investment that she made to go with a better system ended up paying for itself on her utility bills. And so again, instead of all the noise, instead of all the ratings and all these things, I think you should find a good contractor and I would focus on those three technologies. I would find a contractor that knows these three technologies and believes in those technologies, right? You don't wanna push a good contractor into doing something that they've never done before or aren't comfortable doing. But if you find a good contractor and stick with those three technologies, I think you're going to be pretty happy in the end. Just my opinion. Hopefully, if you listen to this advice, hopefully it works out for you. Let me know your thoughts. Comment down below. Have you had an inverter system that you weren't happy with? Did you go another route versus this route for one reason or another? I'd love to hear about that. Comment down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about the new refrigerants coming out and which one I think is better. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.